how many ions are in 1.25 grams of Na2O, or sodium oxide? Well, how many implies that we are going to try to count the number of them, which means we're going to have to convert grams to moles. Now, because we're actually asked for the, the particles themselves, we're going to have to convert moles to the number of molecules, which in this case is actually formula unit because it's an ionic compound, but the word molecules gets the point across. And then because these particles are made of ions, we're going to have to convert that to number of ions as well. It's gonna be a three-step process. Let's get it. To convert grams to moles, you're going to use moles equals mass divided by molar mass. But you need to calculate the molar mass of this compound. The molar mass of Na2O is going to be two of these Na's, which is 23.0 each, along with an O. Each O is 16.0. Now you might have more decimal places on your periodic table. You should obviously use the periodic table your teacher wants you to use. Two times 23 plus 16 gives me a molar mass of about 62 grams per mole. Now, I'm going to take grams 1.25 and divide it by molar mass 62. Now, I'm going to write my units here. I don't know if your teacher requires that or not. And then I'm going to do 1.25 divided by 62. I end up with a bunch of numbers. I'm going to carry a whole bunch forward and I'm going to round at the very end, okay? This is 0 0.02016 moles of sodium oxide. But that's not how many particles of sodium oxide there are. That's measured in a unit called moles. The way that you calculate number of molecules or formula units from moles is to take number of moles and multiply it by Avogadro's number capital N here is number of particles, molecules, or again, in this case, it's formula units. So I'm going to take my 0 0.02016129 moles, and I'm going to multiply it by Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. Now that's going to be formula units per mole. Yes, I did write Fu for formula units. And when I do that multiplication, I get times 0.6, times 6.022, times 10 to the power of. Now I have a button on my calculator, which is faded. It's EXP. That gives me times 10 to the power of. You just have to be very careful about the way that you're typing this on your calculator. Make sure that you get an answer of 1.21 times 10 to the 22. 1.2141129 times 10 to the power of 22. And this is formula units for me. And then lastly, we have to figure out how many ions are in each formula unit. Well, the Na2 here represents two sodium ions. And the O1, we don't write the one, but there is one hidden there, is one oxide ion. This particle has three ions in each one of them. So I'm going to want to take that number and times it by three ions per formula unit. I'm tripling this number of molecules that I have. Times three equals 3.64 times 10 to the 22. 3.64 times 10 to the power of 22 ions. Now, this had three significant figures. These had three significant figures, and their sum did as well. This had four significant figures. You're supposed to use the smallest of the bunch, so that's three. One, two, three significant figures. Hey, this is great. That's my already rounded answer. So, if you're asked for how many ions are in a sample, you gotta convert it to moles, by dividing by molar mass, 
converted to molecules by timesing or multiplying by Avogadro's number. And then you also multiply by however many ions are in each of the formula units you're given. It may not be three. It depends on the formula itself. You're adding up the subscripts on the ions, okay? Thanks for uh, being with me and best of luck.